Today on the Dirt Bike Track, we learn that copyright infringement is fine when you realize the holders of said copyright you're infringing upon aren't paying any attention. It's how horrorcore artists keep getting away with sampling Goblin Suspiria theme because no one is paying attention to horrorcore. My name is James. I'm Nicole. And this is Mostly, Mostly Speaking Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Oh. Ah, yes, listeners, like I said, my name is James, and oh my goodness, to do this little thing up front, I'm going to have to throw over to my co-host, you know her as the Emissary of Hell and the cold-blooded killer of the BME machines, it's the Bricks, Jakus, Nicole. Hi. Nicole, last night I had the realization out of the four individuals in this apartment, you're the only one who is fertile. Okay. Why did you have to... Y- y- get on board with it. I'm, what do you mean? Get I'm those bored. tubes tied or that that oh, womb okay. removed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can be like butter. You can be like socks. You can be like me. Be barren. We'll be the barren bunch. Fuck the Bradys. Yeah. Yeah, yay. Nicole... Yes. It's cold. Yeah. It's frigid. Yeah. Then the CTA screwed me over, not yesterday, but also today. And I've been, uh, I was outside in like negative 13 degree weather for uh, a whole hour yesterday. Yeah. Because a train did not come. And then the shuttle bus that they said was going to pick us up also didn't arrive. And then today, same same shit, different evening. Yeah. And it wasn't even evening. So you might need to carry the load today, okay? Today? Okay. Yeah, on this recording. Got it. I'm already winded. Okay. Oh, boy. <sighs> Does that mean I get to do a health update then? Go for it. Oh, man. Okay, health update. I got my endoscopy. They said everything looks normal. And I'm like, okay, and? not sure if that's good or bad, but... Like, you want them, like, yeah, it's good, but you also want them to be like, oh, no, actually, we know what's going on. Yeah, I want them to just be like, uh, yeah, it's this thing. Let's just fix it, and you're good. It's your guts. They're overactive. So let's, um, I guess, sedate them. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. We'll pop a little syringe in you full of that mommy milk, and then you're good. But yeah, so, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed it's GERD. Fuck you. It's easy to cure, GERD. No, it's not. Oh, it's not? (laughs) All right. Fingers crossed it's just upset tummy diarrhea. Oh, my God. It's easy to cure. I want to punch you. Um, well, you're too far away from me and you got so little noodle I got. Arms. I also got a Bravo test, which is when they put like a little device like in your throat. Like they like, I think they like pierce it. Like it's a piercing inside of you and it measures your acid levels and you have to wear a like little chunky receiver 24 seven. It was cute. And press a button for certain things and... Which was, like, fine. It was kind of annoying. The main issue was just that, like, because it was basically they pierced my insides in my throat every time I swallowed. It felt like I was, you know, when you eat a chip sideways Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. every every time I swallowed. And it really sucked. And I cried. Why were you crying? I didn't see you crying. So I was miserable. Okay, well, now you're no longer everything's healed. Especially, like, the first day when we just got back home, because then it was just, like, acid also just on your raw throat, Mm -hmm. because it's acid reflux. I also, a Bravo test, I thought that's when Andy Cohen watches me do the backstroke in a pool. But, um, I don't know, Bravo test is kind of cool if you look it up. But don't recommend it. Uh Uh-uh. But you want to know what I would recommend, Nicole? What? Today's guest. Okay. You know him from Lunchbox Collectibles. And if you went to the same high school as us, you know him from the high school. It's Nick Cooper. How's it going, man? 
It's going swell. How about you? It's going pretty good. Just hanging out. It's somehow 20 degrees warmer where you're at than where we're at. Yeah, that that was really weird. I was, say, I was looking at the temperature there, and then, like, my kid lives in Wisconsin, and it's the same thing, like, negative 12 over there, <sighs> and it's it's not fun. I, I feel for you guys. Mm -hmm. Your kid likes Shrek, right? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's her favorite. What's the process of that? Because it's – how was your child th – this – like, kids getting into things from our childhood perplexes me, and I just want to know, how, how'd how that happen? Honestly, like, that happened because of uh, her mom. Okay. Her mom thinks it's the funniest movie in the world, and it's just, like, a comfort movie, so it's just a go-to. Okay. So it's like, oh, it's, it's on. She will yeah. either like it or not. Yeah, and then, like, she was probably, like, a year when, like, she immediately started falling in love with it, and then it became her movie to watch. So. Hell yeah. Just the yeah. first, or is she into all of them? I mean, like, she'll watch them all, but, like, the first one's the one that matters. Okay. Nicole, thoughts on Shrek? Pretty cool. I really like the... I can't remember which one it is. The one where there's, like, a giant gingerbread? That one. Nick, which one is that? I oh man, I I truly do not know. <laughs> I'm at a loss. See, my my knowledge is not the same of my daughter's knowledge. Of Shrek. Yeah, she she's got the knowledge, not me. Yeah, 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 yeah. My knowledge is comic books. My mom and I same knowledge. We love mommy dearest and Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah. Those are just two things my mom likes. One, I'm like, <laughs> eh, I guess I'm coming yeah. around on it now. And then the other, have not seen it. Which is Mommy Dearest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's surprising to me because you say... No more wire hangers yeah. a lot. Yeah. And because my like mom you did. enjoy it. Like, I, I you enjoy will. saying it. But now I need to wait for my mom to be in town when also little Corey can come over and the what? three of us will watch it together oh and podcast <laughs> about it. Because that's that's my all my relationships now, as you said, yeah, when yeah. our during our Powerpuff Girls watch along. Yeah, you were like surprised that everyone thought we were doing a podcast. But no, I just wanted to. What, and it's like, yeah, because everything is a podcast. Like, whoa, it's going to be a you. six hour long podcast, Nick. Also, listeners, everyone should, I guess, be informed on this last weekend or maybe two weekends ago now. A bunch of people came over and we just showed each other our favorite Powerpuff Girls episodes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Solid. Were you into Powerpuffs? I mean, it was a fantastic show. It's another one of you know Nova's favorites. So. Oh, hell yeah. Do, do you have any favorite episodes? It's been so long since like I've actually like sat down and paid attention to it. But like what I can only, I can only remember like the, the red character. I can't remember the character's name, but him. like the one that is it him. OK, yeah. I just remember it was like very like androgynous i guess i don't know the terms mm -hmm. i'm terrible with this kind of stuff but yeah <laughs> i just remember that character and like everyone like being like what's that <laughs> <laughs> that character resonates so much with our generation that it's no wonder we're all godless heathens yeah i mean you're not wrong one bit <laughs> nicole godless heathen yes or no uh yeah okay don't tell right. my mom though oh she's listening <laughs> She'll through, be really sad. She's hearing through uh, Brian's earbuds. Fuck. <laughs> she's going to disown me. Actually, no, she'll like. Come just, over more. She'll just be sad because she'll be like, oh, no, now you're going to hell. We won't be able to hang out in the majestic afterlife that is heaven. And But it's Maybe like. Maybe she can use that time to like try to convert you. Like, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> she'll, yeah. she'll use it as like conversation starters now every mm -hmm. chance she can. Oh. Do it. It's better than her saying like, or maybe she'll parlay it into your health updates <laughs> because mm -hmm. it, opposed to always saying, oh, Nicole, my spiritual health, your spine. How's that doing? Have you been doing your stretches? Now she's saying, hey, you want to know what's a great stretch? Bowing down when you pray to the Lord. <laughs> You don't bow down when you pray. To In the pews you do, you do Christian. this. You, you do kneel. this, Nicole. You do this. No, you don't. Yeah. Oh, that's how uh, the churches I went to. Also, a little bit of this and throwing up devil horns because I went to rock and roll <laughs> Christianity <laughs> yeah, churches. 
Well, I went to Catholic, so... I think Nick w- went to a, a bunch of hardcore shows in church basements. <laughs> there there was always a bunch of those all around, and it was always the weirdest, like, placement for them. Mm-hmm. I never understood, like, how they were like, yeah, like, we'll just let this happen, and then chaos ensues, and then it just continues happening, like, week after week. Insane. Yeah, or, like, in library basements or uh-huh. whatever else. It's just like, why? Like, of all the places. It must have, like, I commend those people for, because the government of Muskegon, at least when we were in high school, just hated teens. They're like, oh, we won't give you anything. Oh, wait, why are you all doing drugs now? So I commend the librarians and whoever, I don't think it was, like, direct from the pastors. It must have been, like, the junior pastor saying, yeah, let's just have them throw throw some cool shows in our basement. It's really weird, like, and I, I remember, like, the ones, like, you know, down Whitehall Road, like, there was a church down there, like, I remember, like, a lot of Spute playing there when they were still, like, a local band, mm. and it was like, what? Like, all right, I guess, of all the places to play at, I, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the one Travis was a youth pastor at, right? The, like, uh, I believe so. It was that, like, big-ass one right in front yeah. of the BP. Yeah, it, okay. it looked like a giant warehouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the one I went to a lot. Nick Barham yep. and uh, Gabe Barham. Oh, yeah, all those guys. Mm-hmm. Sleeping with Sirens fame. <laughs> well, that's, en- that's enough Muskegon lore. Let's get oh, into, you said you like comic books, and we'll be getting into Spidey shortly. But as we do when people come on who are big horror movie fans, we like to ask, hey, what's the thing you recommend people all the time for a horror movie? Nick, what is a comic book you like to recommend? It can be a popular one. It could be just a story arc from one. What's something you like to recommend? I'm going to go a little bit out there. I love the early Adventure Into Fear magazines. They were, it was a comic series done in the 70s by Marvel. Issues 10 through like 19 were about a character called Man-Thing. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, swamp creature in Florida, just wants to like be left alone. And then like he, he just burns people, you know, if they're bad or whatever. And it's just the story of like, eco-terrorism essentially like this Mm -hmm. guy is trying to like the villain's name is fa schist so fascist (laughs) (laughs) and it leads into the creation of howard the duck and then his satire stories and all of that because howard and man thing are just intertwined you know fully in marvel comics and they're just two of my favorites that never get enough love oh yeah i love howard the duck i really liked his arc in the civil war period of him Mm -hmm. saying i do I need to register because I'm technically not like a meta human or a mutant, but you guys are telling me I need to. And then he goes to court and has like a big like civil suit win. It was very good. And that's the thing about Howard the Duck that's great is he's a social commentary and a satire of just society as a whole. Mm-hmm. And he has been since he was introduced by Steve Gerber. Did you read Duckpool? No, I, I have it on my list to grab actually. Um but like I, I'm one where I don't do trade paperbacks. I don't do like, you know, the books. I do single issues. Mm-hmm. If I can't find the ones that I want, if I can't find the variant cover that I want, I won't buy it. Oh, you're getting into variants. Oh, oh man, I've got exclusives. I got incentives. I've got one right now. I'm working on grabbing um, uh, a Punisher one because, you know, they're they're bringing him back in the MCU with, uh, you know, John Bernthal. Mm-hmm. There's a cover with him and it's like a two hundred dollar book. And I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> because it's one that I want and it's going to sit on the wall. Nicole, thoughts on variants as someone who would, you know, have to put them on eBay? Uh, Some of them are cool. What about the ones <laughs> that you get to, like, sketch your own? I mean... Oh, the blanks? Those yeah. are for bringing to conventions. I always thought it's like, hey, you're the artist now, and then you would draw them until Nicole said, no, James, that's like, t- so people at... A con can draw something. But also, like, I hate them because, one, it's for a very specific person. Mm -hmm. And two... It really is. Usually, they are so fucking picky about the condition of it. Oh, yeah. And it's fucking white. So it's like, it's just, it's stupid. (laughs) It's bad. 
when Nicole said it's for a specific person, I thought Nick was going to say, and that person's me. <laughs> no, I actually, I only have one sketch cover and it was one that I actually just picked up from a shop up here. They had it for like six, seven bucks. It's not even like some cool artist. It was just like pretty art. And my kid was like, all right. But no, I don't like the sketch covers. I don't I like when I do variants, I do like base variants, incentives like the one in 25s or like the one in 10s. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't go crazy. I'm not the guy buying like the one in 200s, the, like the one in a thousands that they've had for like Todd McFarlane, like ratios. And it's those are insane to me, you know, because you, you're paying like a thousand bucks for, you know, that book. You say you don't buy those, but on your TikTok, that will say otherwise. <laughs> Listen, I, I all the way up to one in 50. That is the highest that I will go because okay. 50 bucks. I get those, you know, right around like 35 bucks, 40 bucks mm -hmm. for those ones. And like, that's the most that I'll pay for it. And it's really got to be an artist that I'm like, all right, I want this. Yeah, I think the only things that when I see variants is, uh, can you clear this up? Do you know James yeah. Stokoe or is it James Stoko? I have no idea on that one. Okay, Th that's that's one of my favorite artists. That him and Doug Mankey are my two favorite artists. And just okay. if they have a cover, I might be like, all right, I'll I'll get this. But most of the time, right. no, I'm I'm spending that face value, and that's it. See, for me, it's Bill Sinkovitz. Uh, his Moon Knight covers are mm. always fantastic. His and then now uh, EM Gist has got some really fantastic covers. But yeah, those are like two that I like. I'm huge on right now. What's a Moon Knight arc that you would suggest people like, hey, this is the best time or best series right, to I, get I, into? I can give you a really simple one and a really easy one. And it's pretty available. It just finished. This last series by Jed McKay is the Midnight Mission series. It's a fantastic arc of just Mark's change as a person and, you know, acceptance of things. And it brings back characters. It gives characters that Marvel has, like, ignored arcs. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with the character 8-Ball. Mm -mm. Yeah. D-grade villain shows up at some point. You know, great appearances all around. You've got new characters. And then it leads into this new series, Vengeance of the Moon Knight, which just released la uh, this month. And it's a fantastic, you know, change. And I, I you know, I'm not going to spoil anything, you know, leading into this new series. But it's it's pretty wild that they released the first issue of it with almost no Moon Knight appearance. And it held everyone's attention. Hell yeah. Like, that's pretty hard to do with a comic book like you, where you have the book, but that character doesn't appear Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, this is great. <laughs> this is about to sound, I'm going to sound like an ant right now. Is Moon Knight and Moon Girl related? No, no. not okay. at all. Well, yeah, I they, said I'm sounding like an ant right now. No, no, no. It's it's one that like a lot of people question because, you know, with the similar names, you mm -hmm. would think that they would be. But no, she has no uh, affiliation to Khonshu. So I have a question. Have Why you yeah. have you read the Moon Knight by Max Bemis? Yeah, I have. Uh, I have a few of those actually uh, on my wall right now. Because I, he's from the band Say Anything. I, I've seen them a couple times. It's fantastic. Yeah, so I've always wanted to read that. Is it any good? It is. I really enjoyed it. It was a good read. It was really cool to see, you know, someone who, I know a lot of people aren't fond of some of the retcons that were done in his run, but I enjoy it overall just to see his perspective of it. You know, mm. I believe that he said that he was like of the Jewish faith as well. So like he had that connection to it and stuff like that. So hell yeah, I, I could be wrong on that, but I believe that's what I was reading. And I was like, all right, that's kind of neat. Like, you know, because there's a lot of that uh, involved in the series. Yeah. Cause so. he has like songs about the Holocaust. So that would make sense. Okay. Yeah. Cause like it, a lot of it ties to the Holocaust and yeah. like, you know, Nazis and stuff like that involved in it. It's a, it's a fantastic run. If it's something that you're looking to check out. He also has songs about Pinocchio. Right? I don't... Isn't that album cover the Pinocchio? album cover is... Okay, well, I just assumed all the songs were thematically about Pinocchio. <laughs> you know, this entire time, I never realized that that album cover was related to Pinocchio. I had no idea. Wow, like, I never we, even, like... We get the two spectrums <laughs> of... Oh, yeah, I thought every album or every song oh on the album God. was Pinocchio. And then another, hey, I've seen that album cover hundreds of times. Never knew it was Pinocchio. And never paid attention. Now, Cursive, he has 
a Pinocchio yes, song. Yes, that right. is true. Well, I thought they were the same person. No. <laughs> He's not from Omaha, Nebraska and best friends with Connor Oberst? Maybe, I don't know. Oh, boy. I got to rescind some of my fan letters now. Yeah. All right, guys, let's get into the the name of the show, Spider-Man. Nick, what is your experience with Spider-Man as a whole or even with this show? So as a whole, I'm pretty versed in Spider-Man. Just every main appearance and stuff, like I've got most of the ones from like the 70s on up. The ones in the 60s, very expensive, out of my price range. Mm-hmm. As for the show, I've watched this episode and like a couple and... They're ridiculous, and I love it. It made me laugh so hard the entire time that I was watching it that I had to rewatch it because I didn't even, like, understand what I watched because I was too busy laughing the first time. Hell yeah. I'm I'm glad you had a good time, not like, oh, what is this garbage trash? It was fantastic. I was laying in bed watching it on my phone, just cackling and you know my my fiance is laying on the couch just laughing at me just giggling in here <laughs> and then she's laughing because like you know it's it, it's all the japanese language and then just spider-man mm-hmm. yeah and she's, she's just losing it so i recently at chicago comics had to organize the spider-man section and boy oh boy uh whoever's an editor at marvel should be smacked in the mouth oh yeah absolutely you can't have Ultimate Spider-Man, then also Ultimate Spider-Man Miles Morales, but then also Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man. And then I found out some of these arcs, like, they changed the name, but they're still the same storyline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yep. And then you've got Ultimate Invasion, where Miles, you know, transfers from the Ultimate Universe to 616. Oh, my goodness. And then now there's the new Ultimate Spider-Man series by Hickman. That just came out. Fantastic read. Highly recommend that one as well if you're looking for a new Spider-Man story. It's it's a huge change, and it brings some characters that you wouldn't expect back mm-hmm. into it. So that's kind of cool. A bunch of people came in yesterday being like, hey, you, you still got that? I'm like, no, you. it's negative 13 degrees <laughs> out. Why did you come in to ask me that? Because Call. they need that 999 issue before it goes up because... These people want to charge whatever, you know, for the variants, you know, oh, well, it's, you know, you can't get it anymore. And it's an exclusive artist, so we're going to charge more. You know, like, I know there's one by J. Scott Campbell, and that was one that is, you know, people are going to be all about. So stuff like that's probably what they're looking for. Someone on Wednesday came in and said, oh, hey, do you guys got that variant? Then I coughed on it and I said, yeah, now it's the Omicron <laughs> variant. Oh and I God. splashed it in their face. That did not happen. I did not work Wednesday. <laughs> it happened on Thursday. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Spider-Man arc that you, an off-kiltered one that you're like, hey, this is really good? I mean, the only one that really, like, jumps to me real fast is Craven's Last Hunt, which they're making a terrible movie of this year, and I refuse to go see. Yeah, I feel like I remember hearing I think it looks good. About it. Nah, man, like, if you know, like, Craven the Hunter and who he's supposed to be and, like, what it's supposed to be, it's it's so bad. I, but we don't know what it's supposed yeah. to be, and, so. you know what? and that's the thing is, I, I'm i a comic guy, but I also understand the difference in the movies in mm-hmm. the comics. And that's a lot of the issues that I see in the comic community is people that are like, oh, this didn't happen in the comics. Why is this happening in the movie or whatever their excuses? Like there was all these complaints about, you know, the, all the shows that come out lately. Mm-hmm. And it's like, OK, it doesn't need to be accurate to the comics. It's a different run. That's how you have to look at it. It's yeah. like it's its own comic series that's being presented to you rather in a book form. It's in a, you know, a video. Just take it as what it is. If you didn't like that one, great. I hate the Bendis run that he did for Moon Knight. Doesn't mean that I don't like everything else. Uh-huh. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just weird that people are like, no, it's bad to me. So it's bad to everyone. So I l- had to look up all of the Craven, like his story arc stuff, because mm-hmm. I was going in our basement trying to find Echo Comics. And that people are like, oh, this is a no name character in Marvel. I can't believe they're doing this. Clearly, these fuckers aren't comic book fans because yeah. every single thing that I looked up for Echo of like, oh, her first appearance in Daredevil, she, it mm-hmm. was like nine through like 16. That's her first story arc. All right. Oh, yes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, Oh my God, we're going to have it. Seven, eight. Okay, 17. All right. 
Uh, I guess people really like Echo. Every time I tried finding yep. Echo, the Moon Knight arc she was in, everything, not there. But we had everything else. And that's that's on two things. A, that's on the guys that are using the comic book industry as like their stocks, mm-hmm. which I have nothing nice to say about those guys. Um, oh, I it's like It's a hobby. It, it shouldn't be. Uh, oh, I hate, man. I mean, oh. I understand from that point, but like it's. For a hobbyist, it's it's really hard to see people like hoarding like Amazing Fantasy 15s when it's like, why not let those go to people that like could afford to pay for them, you know, a little bit less, but don't have it. You know, it's just weird to me. You would think that they would want to share them as a as a Bitcoin bro. I don't mind these people. OK, <laughs> I'm lying just so everyone knows. As someone no, who it, works at a comic book store that has thousands and thousands of comic book issues just collecting dust in the basement for no one to read oh, hey i love hey, those we're people. pulling those up i will make a trip out there <laughs> uh-huh. i already told james this like I, i'm fine with that let the snow go away and i'm gonna make a good trip but yeah no i'm not surprised that you couldn't find those daredevil issues in fact i've got daredevil 10 sitting right next to me her first cover appearance Ooh. Yeah, so. the, the only one I could find was th- like a Daredevil annual that she was in. But okay. so luckily, yeah. I, and it's no moderately one, priced. No it, one likes annuals. Yeah. No, no one likes the annuals for whatever reason. <laughs> I like I the grab annuals. Them. Yeah, as long as it's got a good artwork, I'll grab it and I'll check it out too. It, like uh, I have a bunch of the Simpsons comic annuals. Oh, man. I say I may have to hit you up for uh, some things that I'm looking for specifically, mm-hmm. you know, just before I come out. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was... If you're looking for any like kids comics or like X-rated comics for some dumb reason they haven't I actually know no one wants those besides me they <laughs> haven't like sorted those in the basement yet and they're mm-hmm. all like pushed back into a corner so you can't get at any of them so yeah. I'm I'm upset with them about that yeah because I wanted to see what Invader Zim ones oh, yeah. they had but they're yeah impossible oh, wow. to get I to. forgot about Invader Zim comics. My Hell buddy had yeah, a bunch dude. of those when we were younger. Mm-hmm. Dude, we got to talk about Spider-Man. Yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah, guys. Yes, yes, we're getting cut off track. Today, we are discussing episode 17 of Toei Spider-Man from 1978 entitled Tears of Samson, the pro wrestler. Quick rundown of this episode. There's this pro wrestler. He wants to be big strong, but he's just a little strong right now, especially compared to the strongest man in the world or strongest spider in the world. That's right. It's Spider-Man. So he teams up unknowingly with the Iron Cross army to find Spider-Man, but... Uh Uh-uh, no dice. They can't find him. It's not this bumbling fool who Amazonis thinks it is. I feel so bad for her. Just, it feels like the world is gaslighting her, but only because Takuya is actually, like, he's smart at being dumb. So... This man is like, well, I'm all out of luck. Nuh-uh, we got a fossil soaked with loser's blood. And he's the thing, but Spider-Man wins. Spider-Man, initial thoughts. Fun. I I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. So uh, do you know the backstory of this show? I know absolutely nothing of it aside from like, I know it was done without any licensing. That's the only thing that I'm really aware of. So they had licensing for Spider-Man, the character, but nothing That's, else. Okay. That's so what it, they couldn't get anything else. Right. Sorry. It's kind of one of those things where I think 17 episodes in, they realized no one from Marvel is really checking up on us. So let's just do the thing. Yeah. No. When he showed up, I was like, oh, it's the thung because it's almost <laughs> the thing, but it's not quite like it's it's like, you know, you got the thing off of Wish. Uh huh. And if anyone were to really criticize if Marvel were to come, they'd be like, that's not the thing. He, The thing doesn't have Frankenstein bolts in his head. The thing doesn't have human eyes. <laughs> yes, he does. Not like that. Yeah, he does, dude. Did, did Ron, per- not Ron Perlman, Don, che- not Don Cheadle, Michael Chiklis. <laughs> oh my God. Michael Chiklis, go and dickless for him. Did he have human eyes in this? I don't remember. In Do you remember? It's been so long since I've watched any of the Fantastic Four movies that I always forget they exist. <laughs> so That seems like a movie you could get really stoned and watch. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You can get really stoned and watch any movie. Uh, uh, you cannot get really stoned and watch Biodome. It sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. You just yeah. get really bored. You're like, I uh-huh. just like I'm gonna go I'm gonna go make some food instead. Ugh. You can't what was uh Ghoulies 2? Do not watch that. Oh no, Ghoulies 1 as well. That is scary. Oh wow, I forgot. Ghoulies. But Ghoulies 3 is a great watch regardless of your inebriation. Dude, yes. Human eyes. Okay, he has human eyes? Yeah. He's got them Betty Davis eyes. I got shark eyes. Nicole, put shark eyes on the thing. I'm actually, that will be one of the promo photos for this episode. Wow, I hate it. I love it. Also, like, you... You know no, how to use Photoshop. No, that's what, I, that's what I said. That's I'm going to do it now. Oh, okay. I don't need your help for anything. Good. I'm big, strong, unlike this man. You want to get a note by note? Yeah. Note by note, day Please. by day. Please, Nicole. It's sweaty time. Pro wrestling minus Sean. Because it's, it's a pro wrestling episode. Yeah, why the fuck didn't you save this episode for Sean? Because I had already sent the link to Nick, okay? Okay. Nick, are you into professional wrestling? Uh, yeah, as a kid, I loved it. I used to go to all the WWF wrestling matches and stuff and like Grand Rapids and stuff. Hell yeah. See, Nicole, we're good. But does he have a podcast about I it? I don't. Yeah. I'm not See? that cool. You should have lied. Actually, <laughs> I, actually, I'm sorry. I see in our numbers for Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling, <laughs> uh, you're better off and you're much cooler not having one. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I thought you were going to say like... It doesn't matter that he's not on. Like, Sean wouldn't get us better numbers. Oh, no. (laughs) If we would have changed this, it would have been like next episode. We would have had to have Sean on. But this is not. Sean, if you're listening, you know this. You know this, okay? He's not 200th episode material, okay? He knows. And she's like, oh, he's and crying. He's like, ooh, woo. He's crying right am now. Am I funny? And it's like, yeah, you are. But when you go, ooh, woo, am I make you laugh? Then it's it de- it deters from the laughter. You made him cry. Well, I think anything right now can make <laughs> him cry. You're like, I don't think that's what <laughs> what's making him cry. He's probably crying from tears of joy of like, a friend is mentioning me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Nick, what was your first <laughs> what was your first note? Did you take notes? No, I'm so terrible with it. And oh, that's fine. it was yeah, I'm sorry. Um I, I was really unprepared. It has been a busy week of snow removal. Oh, it's fine. Then when we talk, feel free to interrupt us. Just go, hey! So let's try <laughs> I, I mean, it. I will do that, but like I, I got you. Well, no, let's try it. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> I love this episode of Spider-Man. Oh, boy. When Takuya punched someone, it was really fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I was waiting for <laughs> you to say, hey. Wait, what? I was I wait- oh, oh, no, I'm not going to yell at you. I just said that. <laughs> but I was oh, teeing man. you up to do it. <laughs> I know. I'm so bad. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bad meaning oh, yeah. bad, not bad meaning good. No, bad as in, like, I'm just awful at talking. My My, my skills are not there. No, you're good at talking, okay? This first scene, we see Samson and his brother training him in a wrestling ring in a dojo. Mm -hmm. Not accurate, because if it were accurate, this fucker Samson, his face would be covered in welts by his trainer for no reason just to, but to punch someone to feel better about themselves relatable what i don't know oh um i have a question you're like i went to art school and they just slapped me no that's baking and pastry Uh school but emotionally i mean verbally um what was i saying you're saying nothing you said you had a question yes (laughs) and i have an answer (laughs) Is this episode like every other episode where they don't follow up with the plot of the previous episode or do we get to see? Oh, wait, no, they both died. Never mind. Okay, yeah. And I told you this. Because I'm pissed. (laughs) I'm pissed. I wanted to see Spider-Man wrestle. That's why. That's what my issue is. Him in the ring. See, if they had... I was time hyped for it or money. They would have made a makeshift ring in this like random warehouse area. Mm-hmm. But no, Nicole, I will tell you when they follow up. And guess what? 
the follow-up episodes have already happened. I'm just pissed. <laughs> I wanted to see him wrestle. That kid who died from a car accident by getting hit with a truck, that's yeah. their favorite way to kill people on this show. Children. Which I it guess, really is. I guess... And dis- disabled people. Yeah, I <laughs> guess this... Uh, this is a cautionary tale because kids can see this and be like, oh, yeah, cars can kill you. Don't walk out in the road. Whereas it's saying, hey, don't be a child and don't have a disability or we will run you over with a truck. I think you can interpret it of just like anyone can be run over by a truck. Cars are they they, they don't have bias. OK, oh God. you get hit with a car. But guess the what? People driving the car. They might. Yeah, do. But if you're a, a, the thing. And you've been B-E-M'd. I think you mean Samson. <laughs> okay, well, he, you've been B-E-M'd. <laughs> the silliest name. Actually, I think I know why they did that. Okay. So, Santo, the famous luchador, when he is dubbed into the United States, especially in the 70s and such, they called him Samson. Well, later they call him Boulder Bro. For like a second. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, because he looks like the thing. They can't say, hey, the thing. Yeah. Oh, dang. What if Fantastic Mr. Fox, he starts calling the George thing. Clooney. He's like, hey, what's up, Boulder, bro? I see you got a Morning Star flail swinging it about. Okay. And then it's a reference to this episode. What do you mean, what if? I Yeah, it's Marvel's what if. Marvel's yeah. what if the thing was Boulder Bro and had a Morning Star <laughs> flail? Okay, 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 hold on. That means that Boulder Bro is now in a Wes Anderson movie. Uh-huh. Then we would get introduced to the two, because they're brothers, to, we would get introduced to their shitty father and like their broken, fucked uh-huh. up family dynamic, and it'd be really fun. But in this, it would be grandfather or because like... No parents in this show. It's either you're oh, yeah, an orphan. They're an orphan or yeah. you will be an orphan. Uh-huh. But this is a what or, if. No, because they both die because the other thing is the parents get orphaned. Oh, yeah, that could so, be it. Yeah. yeah. There's a cautionary tale for everyone. There's just going to be an orphan. <laughs> Everyone's an orphan. <laughs> so At some point. <laughs> I've realized I need to become a famous musician. That's how I'll easily be able to parlay into becoming a comic book writer. Easy. Easy. <laughs> They're just throwing out deals to musicians. Hey, yeah. Gerard Way. Hey, come write a comic Mikey book. Mikey Way. Mikey Way. Who's that? His brother. Oh, they both write? Yeah. Damn. Was, un- was unaware of that. So I'm going to do a Marvel's What If. Marvel's What If. Human Torch and Invisible Woman accidentally kissed. Oh, because she's invisible? Well, because they're siblings. But I'm saying, like, that's how it would happen. Like, because oh, she's yeah. invisible. Or it happens at, he you know. He just, like, is walking, doesn't know she's there. Lips like, touch. Maybe it's adult seven minutes in heaven. Like, they're at, the, <laughs> oh, it's it's Avengers Tower. And then they're, like, getting a little tipsy, and then, like, they think they're going in to kiss someone else, and, uh uh-oh, we accidentally kissed. What do you mean they think they're kissing someone else? Uh, Maybe they're like, oh, you go to closet A, and you go to closet B. (laughs) Oh, that works. Oh, well, it works at the Marvel Tower this way, okay? Avengers Tower. Is this true, Nick? You know, I I don't know what happens in Avengers Tower or the Baxter building. That's, That's I don't know. I can't speak on those activities. Well, speaking of uh, <laughs> other uh, people in Marvel, this person, the uh, the Boulder brother, Samson, he gets his house wrecked. And he says to his brother afterwards, after getting wrecked in the ring, he says, I was outclassed out there, which is how my students from the M-Men, a.k.a. the students from Mullum's School of Extraordinary Individuals, okay. they're always outclassed versus the X-Men. That's fair. I mean, at some point, uh, someone's got to think about what, you know, Xavier's been doing to those kids. Mm-hmm. And, also, you know, what, what's been happening? Who funds the X-Men? Xavier. Or maybe it's a nonprofit. But... How are so rich people? Are they getting donations? Then? Yeah, rich people. But people hated government them. Grants. Okay, but the they are government. not part of the government. I know. See, that's that's the thing where you're like, where's the money coming from? Uh huh. I know who funds them. 
Okay. The fundsmen, but who funds the fundsmen? God damn it. <laughs> Thank you. The well fungible done. men. The non fungible <laughs> men, okay? The non fungible men. How are they men if they're non fungible? Huh? <laughs> I'm scratching. That's a true head scratcher. I don't get it. I say I got absolutely nothing off of that one. <sighs> so then they go to the reporter's place. Yeah, Hitomi? Yeah, or H- just the office? Yeah, the office. The office. Oh, well, I wouldn't call... The newspaper office. The Hitomi- magazine office. I-, I wouldn't call Nicole, like, the artist place. No, I would call her the artist person. <laughs> yeah. So they go to this office, and they're like, where's where's our boss at? It's crazy how well, no I- one knows who this is. For some reason, I thought you meant her house, but they never no. go to her house. Uh-uh. They go a couple times to smush. They go to the office. They smush hard in this show. And the lady's not there. Uh-huh. So they leave and Takuya saying, oh, yeah, he... It's crazy how you haven't died yet because your boss <laughs> is a part of the yeah. Iron Cross Army. And then she acts as if, like, a serial killer is in front of her. A Jason As if, Voorhees. Like, someone just jumped out from the bushes. And she screams and she goes, ah! And just like the appropriate reaction is someone saying, like, hey, it's crazy how you haven't died yet. Your boss is part of like an organization that wants to rule the world. I guess like if you work for an Amazon factory. I mean, it's not far off. Yeah, you should be reacting like this all the time. It's just going, ah! And then running away from your spouse. The appropriate thing would have been like, what, fuck you, or wait, really? Oh, should I quit? See, yeah. that that's my question, is like, how oblivious is he to the people around him? Like, how do you not realize that your your boss is a member or doing some shady stuff? Mm-hmm. Nicole, how, how would you react in this situation? Same way. Oh, okay. No notes. Nick, how would you react in this situation? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know, I'm think about it you're like oh your boss is this it's like oh i mean that sounds about right i should probably leave Mm -hmm. like you're saying that like my life's in danger all right bye like that would be the smart thing to do but like it just feels like he's just so oblivious that he's just like ah we'll figure it out yeah or hitomi could say what are you talking about every time i get in trouble with the iron cross army spider-man's there to save me it's true and then he has to be like fuck i i We've talked about this before, Nick. There's a lot of times when Takuya runs away in quotes and then Spider-Man saves his family and then his family. His family's like, what the fuck? Why'd you run away? And just gaslights this dude. The the first time that happened, I would have been like, oh, you want it? I would have changed into Spider-Man and said, I'm actually Spider-Man. No, you are not going to criticize me. I'm putting my life on the line. I technically died once, okay? But see, if you do that, then you take away what is to be Spider-Man, and that's the you know, the realization that you can't have your identity known because it puts everyone that you love in danger. And that's part of the the like the whole idea of it. But I get the, you know, no one's taking credit for something. I'm I'm the one that's out here saving this. Okay, so you know after I mean? after the Superhuman Registration Act, did Mary Jane get murdered? I don't remember. <laughs> it's been so odd. Uh, there's so many. Like I'm trying to like process like what happened after what. Oh gosh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, your silence says everything. She's still yeah. alive and kicking. I mean, I believe she has her own series now. So good. Redheads need representation. Yeah, oh, her name is now Jackpot. Oh, wait, she's a superhero? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She has like a one shot. It was called Jackpot, number one, that was either just came out or is coming out. But yeah, they, she now has like her own thing and they're giving her a series with Black Cat. Oh. Yeah, that's what I thought. She can scream real loud. Yeah, it's just like for creeps to jerk off to. Stop. Why, why, are, you, why are you calling out creeps? Because you recently called it. out creeps. Nicole was going to be on one of my songs, but she's like, no, I don't want to be on that song. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want creeps hearing me say, want to toss my ass. <laughs> I don't want strange <laughs> men listening to me say this like it just is an ick factor. To which I responded, yes, Howard Kramer, a.k.a. Dragon Boy Suede, is strange, but not for those reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let our friend Shelby do it. <laughs> and Shelby's fine with it. 
And that's fine. Also, I think she's better at it anyway. No, you, I think, would have knocked it out of the park. And I bet Shelby would say the same. No. Because Shelby supports women, okay? Oh. She's on a lot of Patreons <laughs> that are women focused. This show has, this is how you know it was filmed in the 70s. It has 70s pacing. And a prime example of that is a man in silent contemplation on his bed. And the only thing we hear is narration explaining his thought process <laughs> instead of just him thinking out loud or in his head. And he narrates himself. I like it, though. Yeah, me too. He, he looks like he's just trying to, like, figure out, like, did I, did I turn the stove off? Like, did I? It's just like the look on his face the entire time is just like pure confusion. Like, ah, what do I do? Did I? I don't know. He was also thinking, oh, man, did I make a mistake by telling my girlfriend she's lucky she's alive? And then he just, my issue with it, okay. He just brips away. Yes. She like <laughs> screams and runs away. And instead of comforting her, he, can't, he just leaves. Because he hasn't, okay, he hasn't told her that he's Spider-Man. That doesn't matter. You can still be like, it's okay. And then like you talk about it. Walk up to her, smack her ass and say, it'll be okay, babe. Okay. When I'm not here, Spider-Man will save you. Yeah. You walk up to her, slap her ass and say... Will you toss my ass? <laughs> no, no, want to toss my ass. Yeah. Uh, Nick, further the bit, he goes up, slaps her ass. What does he say? <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> oh, man, I'm, I'm so bad on the spot. You, hey, I'm you, sorry. You, uh, we'll edit it. It'll sound like you just said it oh, right shit. away. I got nothing, man. Yeah, James, you're, this oh, is too much God. pressure. Yeah, I say I'm, I'm bad on pressure, man. He smacks her ass and says, you want to write an article about me? <laughs> I don't know what it'd be about. I, yeah, I have no idea. She says, yeah, yeah I'll write an article. Japan's most limp-dicked prick. Oh, Jeez. shit. And then it's, Got him. <laughs> then it's just a story about his younger brother. That's fucked up. <laughs> He's like seven. He's still a prick. But you... Uh, no. Lip dick doesn't imply sexuality. It's, it's, it's like an insult. Weird. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to Yeah, go you're up. insulting him hey, for Brogan. having a limp dick. Hey, Brogan, hey, you you're should a have limp a... dick prick. That's my you nephew. He's a... like 4. You should have an erection. No, you... he's just a, he's a limp dick prick. It's just something you say to someone. <laughs> you child. Oh, okay, if I say like you huge asshole, that's not Im implying that they have a <laughs> engorged puckered prostate so hard that it it pushes out of their butt like it, you're puckering up. <laughs> I wish Nick had a camera on. Nick, is your child allowed to say shark? <laughs> oh. Oh, my, my kid, there's no, like, I mean, there's been times where she's been in the car and she's like, can I say a bad word? And it's like, yeah. And she's like, I'm sick of this fucking car. And it's like, <laughs> you know what? You said it with your chest. I'm proud of you. But like, would shart be one of them? Oh, you know, shart, shart is an okay word because okay. it's an, ex it, you know, you, it, you know. Like it she happened. wouldn't have to ask permission. No, that's, that's just, you're just saying what happened. We've all, we've all had those days. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So on Halloween, it was, you know, snowy and whatnot, but we were still, you know, doing our duties as the neighborhood adults, passing out candy. Yep. And I was zooted. So I was like, I th I said shart or something. And Nicole's like, whoa, 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 <laughs> there's children around. I'm like, shart's not a bad word. To the point where there were some like preteens. I wasn't asking children this. Like 13, 12 year olds walking around by themselves. I was. I go, hey, would you like get in trouble for saying shart around your parents? And then like the discussion was some were like, oh, no, that's fine. Or I think the consensus was like if you just sharted, like that's the only way you can tell your parents what happened. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I'm sure that there's the parents where they're, like, you know, super controlling and they're like, no, you got to be like, this happened. But, like, I think that's just weird. Like, it's not even really a bad word. Mm -hmm. like, Nicole's thing is, like, it's a shit fart. And I feel like shit's, like, the the lightest of all the, the swears. I think piss is. 
I don't see. I don't even count that as one. See, so, Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour didn't either because I like bleeped it out, and he's like, "Well, wait. So you left in a, I think like a shit, or like even <laughs> like you left in someone saying fuck, and it was like, well, that's I just forgot. And he's like, but you 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 bleeped out piss, and I go, yeah, man. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to say crap. Damn. I wasn't allowed to say the Holy Lord's name in vain. Oh, yeah. That that was the one that got you smacked upside the head. Uh huh. Mr. Lane almost did that to me. Oh, and shit. if I had the <laughs> oh, fucking God. huevos back then or just like I can't be in trouble for saying this church and state remove them. I specifically remember you wandering around with an upside down cross, mm -hmm. giant pendant necklace, just mm -hmm. antagonizing people, like I just wasn't... trying to see if someone like <laughs> not no. like intentionally, but like people were like, that's how oh, so many of like the, the teachers were worried. They took it as like you, you were trying to antagonize them. And it made me laugh so hard every time you would walk past and they'd be like, mm -hmm. I th just thought it was cool because like it had like Technically, it was like, hey, guys, I know these famous horrorcore rappers. That was mainly, and it was self-expression. It only yeah. happened once. Mr. Brickman came up to me and said, like, or was that his name? No. Mr. Bechtel? No, that's a test. Beckman? Yeah, Mr. Beckman came up and said, hey, some people are, like, saying this and that. And I was like, you want to know what? Even though they're allowed to wear their religious stuff— and I don't make a stink about it. I will tuck this in. And I tucked it in and I was wearing like, a, it, guys, this is a huge wooden cross. And I tucked it in my shirt and I just like pushed my chest out a bit. And you could vividly see the outline of it. <laughs> it almost I feel it like makes it, would it worse. Be worse. Yeah, it, it really did. It was hilarious. And that's most people's remembrance of who is James McCollum? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, the kid who wore the upside down crosses all the time. I still have it. It's right there. I see it. Love that. I mean, I'm, I, I would hope that you would keep that thing. It's, you know, there's some history there. Yeah. <laughs> it also has Mr. Stitches from Mental Ward, Kill Yourself Productions, has his signature on it. R.I.P. He is no longer with us. So, yeah, I say you got to keep that. Yeah. The reason why have I told, explained the reason why I had that is you might not even know why I had this. So I don't think I did. In 10th grade, you would at the end have to like make a for like a project explaining one of the things you learned in history class. It needed to be like a 3D project to present. And we right. talked about the Scopes monkey trial. So I just like had I found a stuffed animal monkey and I like crucified it on that cross. And that <laughs> was I was like, hey, this is like monkey to man, you know, like right. Jesus could have been a monkey style thing. And it was also like very re like religious based of like evolution doesn't exist. Two thousand years. That's how long we've been around. God created us. I was like, no, nah, man. Jesus came from apes, baby. And I think I got right. like a B minus on it. And I was completely <laughs> fine with that. But then I just You're like, I'll take it. I just remade it into an upside down cross. And that's how I had it. Interesting. <laughs> I just remember you wearing it around. Like, I mean, there's a bunch of us that just wore whatever and always dealt with the repercussions of it. But yeah, uh, I think it's because everyone thought I was legit insane. I honestly I think a lot of people did. Uh huh. Like that's that's what made it like really funny to me is I was like, dude, like he's not like he's just doing what he wants, listening to what he likes, wearing what he likes, like just leave him alone. He's just neurodivergent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, we're just weird. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't think like everyone else. I'm not like other girls because I got a dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's it like if i were to transition like if i were to be like you want to know what yes this is what i'm doing oh it's gonna take so long and it's gonna be so much money whatever i would do that like the number one reason not because of my happiness and like my mental state of mind and well-being no it's so i could say that joke i'm not like oh other girls God. i have a dick you know anything for the bit yeah or anything for, you know, mental <laughs> wellness. But we yeah. let's get back into Spider notes. Spider-Man. Yes. <laughs> Fuckers. I do. Pissers. Uh, okay. <laughs> Shitters. Sharters. Like I said, I feel bad for Amazonas for how others treat her. But like Takuya just knows, hey, play stupid. 
I do. I always thought Professor Monster, when this happened, he's like, oh, shut up. We already know he's not. He's a bumbling fool. No, he's like, hey, if you really think that, keep surveilling him. I'm fine with you spending resources and time on that. It Like, we need to double check on this if that feeling is st- – he knows a woman's intuition is right. Yeah. Professor Monster, he might kill people, but he supports women. Does he? He's on a lot of OnlyFans. <laughs> He's on I mean, a his, lot of his right hand, His right hand is a woman, so mm-hmm. I'll give him that. In the ring – or the afterwards, they see Takuya, these brothers who wrestle, and the guy who has a bum leg is saying, I'm training my brother in this in hopes that he can claim some of the fame that I wish I had gotten. And that's me teaching Lil Corey any music production. Like, hey, man, you're still young. You can still do this. <laughs> yeah. I just love that, like, the whole time he's just bumbling around with this one crutch. Like, give the man another crutch. He's almost falling over the entire time he's wandering around. Mm -hmm. This is also a prime example of an actor lying on a resume, simply saying, oh, yeah, I can I can use crutches. (laughs) I can play disabled. (laughs) Yeah, because it happens a lot of. Actor saying, oh, yeah, I know how to swim. It, okay, if I get this part, it starts filming in a month. Can I learn how to swim in a month? I would love to be on set watching someone try to do that, like, after they were, like, they lied. And it's just like, what? why is he sinking? What? Why, is, why isn't he kicking? Why are they frailing about? Yeah, this isn't a, this isn't a drowning scene. Uh-uh. Keep swimming. <laughs> He's improvising. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to the script. We told you. <laughs> it happens a lot for motorcycle riding. Okay. That's the biggest one or horse riding. You lie and say you can and just hope and pray you can learn before you start shooting those scenes. Hmm. Just sounds like, you know, the ultimate confidence. Like, yeah, I can ride that horse. Have mm-hmm. you ever done it? No, I'll figure it out, though. We can use a stunt double, right? (laughs) Yeah, I don't like that. So they think Takuya is Spider-Man, and they want Spider-Man to coach the younger brother, and the younger brother's like, all right, I'm going to prove that you are Spider-Man, and he just goes, starts running at him, and Takuya gets in the fighting stance and then looks, and he's like, I don't know how to fight, and then just gets plowed into him, and then Takuya gets up, and he says... Sorry, I ain't gonna cut it to train you. I'm too fragile and a bumbling wimp. (laughs) (laughs) I just love the moment of like, all right, I'm ready. Oh, wait, no, I'm supposed to not be able to fight. Like just that realization where he's like, oh, no, it's you almost gave it away. It's good. Like body comedy. What's the what body language? uh, There's a word for it. Yeah. Physical comedy. (laughs) There we go. Then we see Amazonus's plan, or technically Professor Monster. He wheels in this fossil, and he says, it's not, it's not just any old fossil. This fossil rested below the grounds of a Roman Colosseum. And then Amazonus is like, oh, so it's soaked in the blood of soldiers. Yeah, but these are losers' blood. Winners don't bleed, because even if you bled back then— you're getting infected and you're dying. True. You know, I, I thought that same thing when they were talking about the blood from the Coliseum. I was like, I was like, wait, there's only blood of the losers, though. Mm-hmm. Winners don't bleed, okay? Unless you're one of the many women that R2 Shelby 2 supports on Patreon. Because <laughs> most women bleed, baby. But Nicole soon will not. That's no. Your, your womb will be pulled. That's disgusting. Pulling womb, baby. <laughs> Some people fuck? pull tail, but guess what? I'm pulling womb. <laughs> that should be a new term of like, uh, I guess someone who impregnates a lot. I'm pulling womb. <laughs> or someone as who much has, as I hate it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> or someone who has just like a lot of sex with pregnant women. Uh huh. Oh God. See, at first I was going to go with, like, it's Nick Cannon's new, like, you know, oh, yeah. nickname. But when you're going that route, I don't like that one either. <laughs> I, hey, pregnant women are sexy, okay, guys? Okay. If you can remove the fact that they have something like squirming in them. 
And as long as you can start squirming in them, am I right, guys? Oh, my God. I mean, you can't do it again. She's already there. Yeah. There was once in high school, I wish I could remember this person's name. They said, like, because I was saying, like, oh, yeah, pregnant women are I, even back then. I thought pregnant women were hot. I was saying, like, oh, yeah. And like, it's cool because, like, you can't get them pregnant again. And she goes, yeah, you can. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you can't. Like the egg drops this and that. And she's like, no, my sister got pregnant. Well, pregnant. I was like, you are lying. Your sister just had twins. <laughs> Oh, my God. Your sister is fucking with you. <laughs> uh-huh. Spider-Man goes to this person's house. The younger brother isn't there. Samson's not there. And they show a flashback of him just screaming, turning around, saying, I'm off to get strong. And that had such Brendan, your stepbrother. Mm -hmm. Like, I could see him, like, he's leaving. <laughs> and we're like, where are you going? And he's like, I'm off to get strong. Yeah. I'm like, huh? Hell my, question, yeah, my question really for this guy is like, where they're like, all right, we're going to make him like seem kind of like disabled. Like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's got the sweatpants up all the way. He's got the shirt that's a little too tight. You know, he's got the puppy dog eyes. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm like, is that what they were going with this guy? Because like when he walks away like that, it's like, that's all that I see. Like, I'm going to get strong. It's like, all right, buddy. Good luck. It, it reminded me more of like. A J from Jay and Silent Bob mm, of him screaming okay. like, I'm off to fuck, guys. And I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> All right. No, that, that I can see. Yeah. You're about to join a fake terrorist organization called the Clit. Clit Commander. He commands the Clit, Nicole. And speaking of, of Nicole, not Clits, get it out of here. Can't find him. Yucky, yucky. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, would you, if turned into a BEM machine, would you also run down your brother in a big truck? Oh, yeah. He'd like it, I bet. For sure. That chase scene was so fucking funny. Like, yeah. he's he has a crutch, yeah. and the truck <laughs> cannot keep up with him. It is going so slow, and it's like serpentining like what the fuck is going on when your hands made of rock it's hard to shift out of first gear <laughs> oh yeah that makes sense nicole <laughs> he's lucky he can hold the steering wheel and turn it as erratically as he's doing oh my gosh <laughs> the back and forth swerving just really got me like just go straight like it's a straight shot towards him he's not doing serpentine patterns you don't need to with the truck mm -hmm. he's just He's just hobbling away. Also, yeah. like, you could go in reverse. If you miss him, just, like, go in reverse and then try <laughs> again. Mm -hmm. I think that's also the shifting issue. Like, he can't get oh. it out of first. He's just stuck going in, like, this slow speed, this direction. He could probably just, like, push it. Like, I mean, get if out, he's that strong. Keep it in neutral and push. <laughs> yeah. You're like, again, he has trouble shifting out of first. <laughs> he can't do it. <laughs> he looks at it and he's like, huh? These bulbous hands. I have a thumb, but it's not practical. It doesn't do anything. It's just for show. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's like my thumb. <laughs> it's just for show, baby. What? I used to be a hand model specifying in thumb wear. Thumbs and thumb accessories. I was a star of Steve Odekirk's thumb series. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, eventually just just murders him. Yeah. Runs him over. This is, you know, minimum 17 people have died in this series so far. Oh, wow. Yeah, we see it often. Two people died in this episode. So... That's fair. A child died once. Parents are always getting offed. Get off those parents. Spray off on those parents. <laughs> They're covered in bugs. I love the miniature truck going into the water. That was cute. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, you left. Uh, my eyes were closed. Ah! I forgot how easy, after like we've been watching like Akiba Ranger over on the Patreon and other shows... This show's so easy to watch at four times speed because there's not a lot of dialogue. No, and that's the thing is I think I did watch it like at twice speed earlier this afternoon just because mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I need a refresher real fast. Yeah. My next note is when he like starts battling, mm -hmm. he all, he rips a man's face off without ripping it off because Spider-Man <laughs> comes down from 
the top of a bunch of shipping containers, grabs a man's face as he's hanging up, grabs it by the chin, and just kind of like grabs. And it looked like if this were rated R, he would have ripped this face off. Face off? Oh, yeah, he'd have peeled it back just like a can opener. Uh Uh-huh, but it doesn't happen. But it feels like it did. Should have. Should have, could have, would have. Would have made it a lot cooler. I'll give you that. Just start spraying blood. And then Spider-Man's like, I don't know my own strength. <laughs> and then we find out that he actually he actually broke Hitomi's ass when he smacked it <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah. No one would believe that I've been out in negative degree weathers for so long. I'm on it today. Yeah. We're back, baby. We're back. Maybe it's, you know. Maybelline. Good. Good for it's to not. wake you up. No. <laughs> I feel exhausted. <laughs> Can't wait to do it again tomorrow. Uh, well, we'll be researching when buses are coming because at least the buses are on time. Mm-hmm. And some are and early. Mean, it's debatable. No. I've Oh, you've been out for two days today. <laughs> the buses were more reliable to me than the brown line. And the brown line usually is fantastic. Yeah. Trying to tell me you're gaslighting. <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping warm over here. They lose human compassion when you turn into a BME. Sounds like anyone when their bank account goes above 500K. They lose human <laughs> compassion. And that's my last note. Anything else, Nicole? No. Any other thoughts and comments, Nick? I mean, I, I wish that I had more notes. I'm sorry. Oh, Maybe no, you're if good. you invite me back next time, I'll be prepared with more. <laughs> Hell yeah, we'll get you back on for... Mostly speaking Shrek. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm in. 100%. <laughs> my kid would lose her mind about that. My dad's on a podcast talking about Shrek. Oh, my God. Why are they talking so much about cum? <laughs> you, you know, and that's the thing is it, she probably wouldn't even understand. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll make it like a science lesson first to explain what cum is, and then we can just riff <laughs> on it nonstop. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Okay, so we do have one final thing to ask you, Nick. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man, in most continuity, is bit by a radioactive spider, and that's how he gets his powers that are generally spider-like. So, if you were to be bit by an animal to get their powers, what animal would it be, and how would you use that to take down the Iron Cross army? Oh, man, what would it be? There's so many good options. You could go ridiculous... You know, you could go like just just like, a you know, a ladybug. You're like, all right, I'm going to fly around and cause chaos as this little thing, just annoying everyone as they're just driving through machinery and then just, oh, no, they just blew it up. Mm -hmm. And have a stinky smell. Yeah, you could go like very Looney Tunes with it or you could go like, I'm going to get bit by a bear. Like, yeah, you're going to get mauled. But like then now you've got like super bear powers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Either way, you win. But it just depends on which route you want to go. Well, what route are you going? I think I got to go with the ladybug because right. I want to be as ridiculous as possible. You'd have really strong armor. Yeah. And you're just like flying. Like you just zip through like, you know, it's kind of like a June bug, you know, where you're getting hit in the face with those things. But you just like it's a ladybug just flies right through you because it's so strong. Oh, <laughs> you'd be able to uh, blend in very well at a I Love Lucy convention. I she, I mean, she has like those true. polka dots and such. <laughs> her her okay. patterns were generally polka dotty, or I could have sure. said Betty Boop, maybe. More things that I have like no understanding of. Yeah, Betty Just Boop is lost. a comic book. I love Lucy is a comic book. You see, I, I you know, I, if it's not superheroes, it's got to be the pre code horror. Other than okay. that, I don't know it. I'll, <laughs> I'll find a Betty Boop comic that she's you find a superhero. Me one, I'll check it out. You find me one, I'll read it. So I guess like ladybugs just kind of are there. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. They're they, just like existing. They do have a distinct smell, and I do, ladybugs smell gross. They're also really bitter if you accidentally eat one. Ew, you sick freak. How do you know this? <laughs> like, I, I'm genuinely curious. How do you know this? Because there was one, I was eating uh, <laughs> Cookie Crisp. And it must have been on one of, you know, one of the cereal pieces and I just ate it and it was tasted really fucking bad. And it just that taste just like stayed in my mouth for the Ugh. whole you're, day. You're like, that's not a chocolate chip on that cookie. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a chocolate chip or a raisin. That was a ladybug. 
Maybe that will be a Patreon goal. If we get up to two hundred dollars, I'll eat a ladybug oh, on screen. No, what the uh-huh. fuck? Two hundred dollars. We're almost there. We just need sixty more to go. I hated that every like like every year. There's that time of year where the house is just fucking covered yeah. in ladybugs, and it's just f- having flashbacks to that bitter taste. I hate it. <laughs> You're like, what if one flies in my mouth? Yeah. Every time she sees one fortunate son plays in her head. Oh, no. Having Vietnam War flashbacks. <laughs> of just eating cookie crisp. <laughs> Dish. Yeah. Um, Dish. Oh. <laughs> you run like Hitomi. <laughs> I feel like I should stop eating cereal at my mom's house at this point. Yeah, do it. Because I also accidentally ate a worm. Yeah. That way. You know, once you're once you've hit two bugs in like a certain kind of like food, like I, that's when you got to call like uh, cereals a no go anymore there. Yeah. Sorry, I'm hearing jingle bells going off and that's scary. Yeah. Where would the cats? Uh, they that would there's be bells in the bathroom and yeah. there's bells on the back door handle, which okay. is terrifying. OK, well, let's. It sounds like they're upset that you're not letting them in to help record. That or someone's here. Like, that's that's my big oh, scary. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's terrifying. Yeah, I say you, you may want to check that. <laughs> yeah, guys, let's do plugs and then we'll see if it's too late. If we get murdered. Oh, not. hopefully. If you guys hear this episode, guess what? Maybe Eric B. of Trekkie Command Power Hour. Oh, no. And maybe he found the files and he edited it and released it. That's what I'm saying. We're dead in this scenario. Oh, that's so kind. Uh Uh-huh. Thank you, Eric. But also thank you, Nick, for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. It was great. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, I mean, so I've got an Instagram where I do daily comic posts. Uh, It's lunchbox.comics as well. Uh, TikTok, we've got different videos of, you know, stuff that we picked up, um, Pokemon stuff. And then we also have an online store, lunchboxcomics.square.site. Uh, just a bunch of back issue books that I put up for sale. I know you work at a comic store, but I'm going to throw my plug in there, too. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, plug your stuff. No, no, no. You're good. I was just giving you a hard time. No. Nicole, what you got to plug? Oh, boy. Follow Darling Homebody on all the social medias and go to darlinghomebody.com to... Find all the cool stuff that I make. I make stickers and pins and just all the things. Yeah, someone came into the comic book store yesterday saying, oh my, looked at your stickers and said, oh my God, I know that artist. I saw them at a convention. Which is like really fucking awesome that they Uh like remembered my stuff. Yeah, and I, I was like, they look familiar, so I remember them as well. Weird. Uh huh. That's fucking sick. Yeah, guys, uh, listen to my music under Marshland Monster, Howard Kramer, a.k.a. Dragon Boy Suede. The album is done of us two. All we got to do is get a cover art that will probably be out in April. But before that, uh, d- February 23rd, I believe, is when G.O.D. Goods on Display, that single is releasing. It's him and I. I think it's the best off from the album. I'm very excited to release it. It's so good. Ooh, baby. There's time travel in it as well. Ooh, But it's not the song you better come in your mom or you'll never be born. That'll be a different one. Uh, I've talked about that, Nicole, on a show no one listens to, but I did talk about it. Okay. So, yeah, guys, listen to that. Listen to the other podcasts like Death to Squids over on the Marshland Media podcast feed, wherever podcasts are found. Wherever you're listening to this, you can also listen to that, as well as Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling, Formulaic, a podcast and script writing, and so much more. Oh, yeah. And head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. This Friday will be This Existed, Lil Corey and I talking about 2002's Christina Ricci star. And producing Pumpkin. It's very good. It's such a good movie. And if you're a $10 patron, you get all of the weekly stuff. Also, 
You get monthly bonus content in the form of straight to Patreon or a watch along. This month might be with Z coming over to watch a weird shark movie or Sean's going to come over to watch a weird wrestling movie. It's up in the air right now. But you also get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those starting with Steve F, Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, The Waz, Orion, Jordan B, The Chaos Witch, my Bickle brother in common law, Joshua Jacus, and you better run. Nicole's coming for you in a car. Steve Barnes of Sweet Child of Time and Intro Void, the woman which I emerged, my mother, Lil Corey's BFF, and now former roommate Shane, that fed, twitch.tv forward slash core winning, it's Corwin, and from the ROM complex, as well as Formulaic, a podcast and script writing, it's possibly our 200th episode guest, R2 Shelby 2 from twitch.tv forward slash R2 Shelby 2. And I've been James. I'm Nicole. I'm Nick. And we've been Mostly Mostly Speaking Spider-Man. Bye-bye. Bye. This has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today. Oh, yeah.